Agent 47 and Diana Burnwood are the world's top assassins working for the ICA. Unknowingly, they have been hired by a shadow client to target a number of operatives of Providence, a secret organization working in the highest echelons of power. Providence's controller, the Constant, approaches Diana and makes her a deal. Eliminate the shadow client and learn about 47's past. But when 47 discovers that the shadow client is Lucas Gray, his lost childhood friend, he and Diana switch sides to fulfill an old pact. Destroy Providence. Together, they manage to capture the Constant, forcing him to reveal the identities of the three Providence partners. Eliminate them, and the war would be over. However, the Constant has an ace up his sleeve. Look closer. In the shadows. Behind the everyday world. Beyond the headlines and the seats of power. A hidden hand. A kind of company known as Providence. To it, we were just assets to use and throw away, to do the unthinkable, the unforgivable, and it never gave us a second thought until now. After decades in the shadows, we are fighting back, me and 47. Much has been lost, but we are closer than ever. We trapped the Constant, Providence's chief controller, and finally learnt the names of its three partners. In their downfall, we lay the past to rest. And, just maybe, look towards the future. 37. It's time. Partners are down there. You know, I never planned this far ahead. You never do. I see someone got his memory back. Wait, is that a beacon? <laughs> what the hell? Base. Alexa Carlisle's helicopter just took off. Confirm target locations, over. Diana, what's the status? Right. We have a situation. Carlisle has left the building. And I think I know why. The Constant has escaped. He persuaded one of the sailors into setting him free. And since then, he's been seizing control of Providence assets and resources. I can only assume Carlisle is rushing to contain the damage. If she slips away again... We'll keep track of her. Make sure she doesn't. Meanwhile, the plan stays the same. Your destination is the Scepter, the world's tallest building where the partners are laying low, courtesy of their host, Sheikh Omar Al-Ghazali. Marcus Stuyvesant is fifth generation old money. His family made its fortune in real estate and banking and were at one point the chief landowners in New York. Carl Ingram is a powerful Washington kingmaker whose family grew rich selling gunpowder during the American Civil War and later established a globe-spanning empire in oil, coal, and steel. Both families long since retreated from public view, but their quiet dominance endures to this day. Now, the partners likely suspect that we're coming, so Mr. Gray will infiltrate building controls and disable all electronic doors and elevators. Stuyvesant and Ingram are about to find they have nowhere left to run. Right. 
This is our moment, 47. Providence ruined our lives with the flick of a pen. Today, we return the favor. Happy hunting. Welcome to Dubai, 47. Today is the inauguration of the scepter, and the ceremony is well underway. You will find Marcus Stuyvesant near the building's signature art installation. While a paranoid Carl Ingram has ensconced himself in his penthouse suite, security on highest alert. Mr. Gray is already in position and ready to assist. Good luck, 47. 47. Come in. 47, do you copy? I'm here. Are you in position? I'm heading towards the point of entry. Good. Get back to me when you're there. Use your camera and scan the lock, will you? I think I can override the window's controls from here. Position. 47, the inauguration is taking place close by. Once you've infiltrated it, get your bearings. I'm sure there must be floor plans somewhere. Understood. We need absolute focus on this one. If Ingram and Stuyvesant are alerted to our presence, we may lose them for good. We are so close, 47. Don't worry. They're not going anywhere. On behalf of His Royal Highness Omar al Ghazali, I bid you welcome to the center. Welcome! Welcome. Hello! Good to see you. How lovely to see so many familiar, familiar faces here today. Thank this has been a present of mine for many, many years. And as all of you know, I am from one of the less privileged sides of the respectful. Al-Ghazali family. But with a small loan from my father, I soon built up a construction empire that was worthy of the great Al-Ghazali bro. So, I would like to thank my cousins, without whose friendship and influence this machine might not have been possible. Thank you. I'm proud to yet again immortalize our great family name. But most importantly, this building is for all the
today, sir. So I'm humbly proud to hold the first hour of the Sally. I've been personally invited by the Royal Highness Omar Al Ghazali. I should have clearance. The name is Zaina Kazi. Sir, I understand. But you can't enter without being searched. It's standard procedure. This is ridiculous. Well, that's how it is. Think about it and come back if you want. I'll be waiting upstairs in the reception. Zana Kazim, aka the Vulture. One of the top agents working for Crystal Dawn, the Pan African terrorist organization. I almost hired him myself once, but chose the Maelstrom instead. Now what is his business here? Understood. Crystal. Excuse me, but it really freaks me out when people stand too close to me. Well, that was a big waste of time. Crystal Dawn won't be happy. <laughs> Excuse me, but can you please extinguish that cigarette? You are blowing <coughs> cancer directly into my... Oh. Excuse me? Come on, pick that up. Hello, sir. I think you are coming on a little too strong, mister. Hello, sir. Hey. Good job. Hey there. Sir, you should go back the way you That's came. It. One you might get into trouble. The other. Sir, if you want to get through, I'm going to have to pad you down. This will just take a sec, sir. Right, that's it. Keep moving, please. Oh, Mr. Kazim, I'm glad you changed your mind. Arrogance can hey there, be a dangerous guy. trait. Yes, indeed, it can. 
Mr. Ingram has been expecting you. We have a conference room set up for you. How are you? Please, go in and make yourself comfortable. Mr. Ingram will be with you shortly. Thank you. Just keep Please going. Make yourself comfortable. I'll get straight to the point. I have a, well, let's call it a dispute, which the Royal Highness tells me you're very capable of taking care of. Now, I've worked with your organization before, in Morocco, I believe, so I'm a little hesitant. Don't be. We do what's needed. Well, only time will tell. I have two assignments for you. Take care of the first one, and then we can discuss the bigger fish. Now, on to the first. An acute problem has been brought to my attention. Keep talking. I'll be candid with you. No one is supposed to know that I'm here. However, there's a journalist down at the inauguration, and he's asking rather intrusive questions about who's staying up here, and that is a very dangerous problem for me. Now, I want you to silence this little pain. You think you can do that? It's what I do best. I like your bluntness. This is his file. Hans looked. Pulitzer winning freelance journalist. He's... Good. And won't give up until he gets the answers he needs. And that can't happen. Consider it done. Good man. And remember, I want a picture. I want proof so I can sleep tonight. Of course. Once this little assignment is completed, come back and talk to Miss Toe. Then we can discuss the real cancer that needs to be removed. I'm sure you can see yourself out. That's Carl Ingram, Providence partner and brass balls billionaire. A legendary political fixer, Ingram is old money and as rotten as they come. You're not coming through here, mate. Please stay back.
Closer. Hello, I don't mean to pry, but upstairs, do you by any chance know who's staying there? I... Mr. Lucked, I hear you're looking for information. Oh, really? Okay. You know what's happening upstairs? I know more than you could imagine. But we can't talk here. Follow me. Great. Lead the way. Sure, we passed plenty of places where we could talk. I hope it's worth it. Wait for me here. I'll be back as soon as possible. All right, whatever it is, better be. <gasps> Yes, that's it. Now Ingram trusts you, it's like shooting fish in a barrel. Good man, looking good. What's up? Mr. Kazim, welcome back. So, you have the picture. Yes, here. Good. Our guest will be delighted. Please follow me. He's waiting. If you just follow me, Mr. Kazim. Yo, man. How are you, sir? I apologize about the incident earlier downstairs. But you have to understand that we need to keep security tight, no matter who. All our guests go through the same procedure.
Have you seen the view yet? It's quite spectacular. On a clear day, you get a wonderful view of the Arabian Desert. It's a sight to behold the vastness of it. You really can't let this go. Back in China, this would never be possible because of all the smog. Mr. Ingram is expecting you. Looking fine today, sir. So good to see you. You have the picture? Yes. Your problem is fixed. <laughs> Omar said you were good. Let's get down to the important business at hand. Okay, people, clear the room. I need to discuss some delicate business with Mr. Kazin. Perfect. Yeah. We have I Ingram right where we want him. Excuse me for a second. 47, you know drink. what to do. Have a drink, see the view. It's something to behold. for the meeting. I assume that will not be a problem. Either way, you have no choice in the matter. Make yourself comfortable. And as I was saying, it's interesting we haven't come across each other before, Mr. Kazim. Well, maybe not. I usually have my people talk to people like you. I can imagine. I don't know how much Omar, I mean, the Royal Highness, has told you. But my guess is very little, so let me get straight to the point. My organization has been hit by an unpleasant cancer that can only be removed by cutting it out of the gut, if you get my drift. Yes, I do. Good. This little turd is spreading his vile, toxic cells, and I want him stopped. Brutally. Chemo won't remove him. Only the knife. I have his file here. Arthur Edwards, a sly little devil if there ever was one. Me and my associates, well, we underestimated the little worm. We want revenge. I think you and I share a common interest. I doubt that, but I want you to make him suffer. This is not a horse that needs to be put out of its misery. This is a rabid dog that needs to be put down. Am I making myself clear, Mr. Kazim? Yes. Consider it done. Good. We're now in business. We are. I'll have Miss Toe send you anything you need. We're done here. Oh, uh, one last question. I'm just curious. You're nicknamed the Vulture. Why? I find it's best to wait for the perfect kill. I think you'll be perfect for the job. Nice to meet you, Mr. Kazim. I look forward to receiving an update. Safe hunting. Guard. Yes, Mr. Ingram? Please show Mr. Kazim out. Yes, sir. Mr. Kazim, please follow me. Mr. Kazim? Afternoon. Boy, no more hate, people! Alpha, move on! Show me your hook, you karate kid. Zero, two, out. Engage. Engage. Gotcha. Gotcha. Cease fire. Tango's in cover. What? We got a live one. Heads down. Let's go. Move to Tango's last known position. That's the negative. 
Yeah, you know the guest grumpy one always wants peace and quiet. Now, I haven't seen him playing golf today. You must be in a good mood. Don't tempt fate. I don't think I've ever worked with a man who could get this such a state. See, my neighbor always complained about noise. He pissed me off big time. What did you do? I kicked his door in, put a gun in his face, told him if he didn't like noise, he would pack his shit and run it down. Gonna work right. <laughs> oh, yeah. 